Hi guys, it's me again. K.O. Cool, what's up, what's up, y'all? Hey, before I start, like, subscribe, all that cool stuff, because it's free and it's how you can support my baby little chat. Well, I've got many updates today on this fiend. Look at the cut on his arm though, that still shocks me. That's when he got pulled over driving back home with daddy. And yeah, this guy's gonna go down and he's gonna go down and he's gonna go down in the chair, in my opinion. So I don't know if you, any of you know BTK, but BTK is a serial iller and he did a lot of heinous crimes, like seriously heinous. And you can go and look into him. I'm not going into his case uh, right now. Apparently, Brian was writing to him in prison. How interesting, considering that they allow people to write to these absolute freaks of nature that should have been down in the chair long before they could start writing letters back and forward to people. So BTK said, no, no, he hasn't been writing to me. But the thing is, he said, which is quite bothering, it's bothersome that he said, uh, I do feel that Brian is a serial iller. Right. So coming from one serial iller to the other, he knows. He, he knows a, a baddie when, when he can spot one. It's like, oh, wow. Like, this is why I don't think people like BTK, like Koberger, should be allowed to live. I'm with you, Steve Gonzalez, because he's the one that said, I will be happy when he is DED. So BTK had a reign of illings for 25 years. He was a Boy Scout leader. He volunteered for the church. No one could actually fathom that he is the one that did it. And that is why no one could fathom when Brian did it, i.e. his family and close friends. Everyone was in utter shock. And that is their MO. And they are very, very calculated with their crimes. Now I'm going to bring up an article stating what BTK said and it, it's disturbing. It's just disturbing that this guy can even see the news in jail. Like, oh, so he's got a daughter and she has spoken to Brian Enton, our favorite news correspondent. And she said she feels that Brian may have been writing to him because I don't know if you guys know, but Brian's professor at university has written many books. Ramslin is her last name and she has written many books and she has spoken in length to BTK. So this is the article and this he says that he feels that Brian shares very similar traits to himself. And I said that in the first video I made that I feel that Brian is a serial iller. I think he's done this before. I think that he has been dark for a very, very long time. He has the psyche, he has the MO, he has everything about a serial iller. And that is really, really worrying when you've got another guy who unalived 10 people and did it over a 25 years span. But the one thing that BTK did is he taunted the police. He'd send letters, he'd say, go and check this book out in the library and there'd be a letter in it from him saying, oh, by the way, I unalived this person and they had no evidence, but after a while, after 25 years, they got him. So man, they did a great job getting Brian this fast, but I still think they're gonna uncover that he has done this before. I will stand by it and I hope it will clear up a few crimes that are within his area. I am gonna make an actual video about all them, the other two crimes that were done, but I just thought I'd catch everyone up on the latest info and as we all know it was the sheath that got him knife sheath he left it at the scene and his dna was on that little button you absolute fool i guess he didn't realize that it had fallen off and that's why i think he went back at nine that same morning like apparently he did it around 4 a.m between 4 a.m and 4 30 and then he was back at the crime scene at nine no one knew the police didn't come till midday. So I think he, he may have wanted to either go back and hurt the girl that saw him DM or to retrieve that because that was going to be what incriminates him. Now there's been this, uh, it's called tap to chat, 
This was all written by Brian Koberger when he was 16, 15 or 16. I'm not going to read through all of that. Please pause it and read it. It's very interesting. He's, I've got smaller parts that he actually wrote, which, you know, indicates that he's never been a very happy person. And the teen years is when people can actually change. I mean, have a real chemical change within their body. Now, he's talking about having this snow vision where he sees flecks in front of his eyes all the time. It really doesn't make people get depressed. Like, I do believe he's always been depressed, but he's hidden it. This is very, very disturbing that he has written all of this and he is only 16, man. So there was one part that I found quite intriguing in this story that he put up on December 19, 2011 talking about his snow vision. I've had this for over two years and I've had it bad in every single way. Not one night have I slept normal since I feel like I'm trapped here. I have been able to block it out for a while now, but I realize what is wrong and suddenly becomes unbelievable. I'm desensitized in every way now. People say these are supposed to be the years I enjoy and cherish. Well, I can't say I will cherish these days. That's from a 16-year-old Brian Koberger, and that is a worry. And I believe that that after 16 is when he hit the, you know, the H, you know, in the mainline type shit. And he was addicted for four years. So from year 11, 12, and then the first two years out of high school, he was addicted. That's why he was a late comer to uni. I don't know what you call 11 and 12, but that's what we call it. The final two years of school. He was addicted to H. I can't say it, obviously, because of YouTube and its stupid rules. But yeah, it is really a worry. Uh, here is what he's actually said on the Reddit posts. And they are, once again, beyond disturbing, considering it probably is him. Everything he's been doing is like BTK, but in a modern version, because BTK was back, started back in 73. So obviously there's no uh, computers, interwebs. So he was doing writing letters and he thought he was smarter than the police. Actually getting away with it for 20 years, man, he would have been shocked when they got him. But the thing that got him was DNA. And back then DNA did not exist as in DNA analysis but this guy uh, I can't believe he said a rush of adrenaline very excited when someone said how do you think the Illa feels and he's like a rush of adrenaline and very excited if we find out that this is all his words it is even more disturbing but I'm not shocked by much of what this guy's done because this is one of the most horrific crimes we've seen in a very long time. Even if one student was killed, it would have been scary and horrific because he's your real deal boogeyman. He's the man that is in books that people say, there's crazies out there, they'll track you, they'll stalk you, and they'll do that. That is one of the scariest things because it's not that often we get these types of illers in our society. You know what I mean? Most, most illings are... I can't say that word either just for everyone. I, I can speak English, but you can't say that word. He made it his goal, I believe. He went to university, he studied criminology to try and satiate this feeling he had. But I don't think it actually helped in any way except ramp up the feeling to do it. That's how I feel. And I don't know if you've met anyone that's come off H and it's like they're dead inside. And why are they dead inside? Because the feeling they used to get from that drug is better than any feeling you'll ever feel. I don't know if personally, but I, it, there's a lot of data on it. And they all talk about how when they get off it, nothing feels as good anymore. Like they almost feel like they're numb and dead inside. And when you go back to what I just found, that tap and talk stuff that he wrote when he was 16, he already felt dead inside. And then he took the H. He felt better because it numbed that loss, that feeling that he had, all of that snow vision, who knows. 
but then when he came off that's when I think it really hit home that yeah he has no feeling and the crazy thing about people doing these types of illings is that they quite often want to feel and this is the only thing they can do to start feeling again I know that's bizarre Dharma said the same thing that they felt alive when they did this but look at this this one's one of the reddit posts of him inside inside looking sometimes illas are satisfied by the number they hit maybe the illa was satisfied with four Millie suggestion my roommates survive okay okay it's dark man that all the things that he wrote this one i found so bizarre yeah he took a nice long hot shower in the residence he unalived four people and even bought his own soap all i'm saying is if this is not brian koberger writing this who the hell is it and why are they so twisted if it is him well wow that's the one that got me in the last video that ethan chapman was not in the hallway which is what the police said and sometimes these like reddit threads are actually started up by the police or the fbi because they want to taunt him as well and they want him to come out and everyone in this reddit kept on saying oh no you know ethan was in the hallway and he's like he is not in the hallway he said this at like three separate times it really was starting to piss him off just as it was upsetting him that everyone was getting all the details wrong yeah you know, like the blood running down the stairs no it was running down the wall on the outside like he just knew all this weird stuff so it could have been an officer an it crack team fbi officer writing all of this to try and bring brian out of the woodwork it, it could go either way it could be either him or an officer because the details are very very correct since what we know now with the affidavit coming out that ethan was in the bedroom he was not in the hallway so whoever wrote that knew and it could be brian or it could be the coppers but you know how the young lady this young lady came out of her bedroom and came face to face with brian well it's come out today that and this is not official but a lot of crime channels received emails stating this fact that this young lady dm she was trip if you know what i mean and everything seemed not real to her and that is why she didn't call the police it could be a fake email trail it could not be we don't really know but it would make a lot of sense because i kept on thinking how could you hear all of this and then go back to your room well she was off her chops and that is why and that's really really sad for her because the guilt that she is going to have is is never going to leave her she's got ptsd for life i don't believe she had anything to do with it i don't believe she did not care that theory actually makes a lot of sense to me that she was just off her chops this lovely channel cluminati put the rap song that brian put up when i think he was 17 or 18 but he's put this song up and she's actually put the words to it his words so i'm gonna leave you with that and it is it's freaking disturbing man like what is wrong with this kid a lot and we're gonna find out more and more uh, mark my word you got a you got one of the most heinous serial killers in jail saying that he thinks you are well he's probably correct anyways i'm gonna love you and leave you and i'll leave you with this disturbing rap song by the teenager brian koberger yes i have a sort of voice counseling always the same thing that disrupts my life wonder when i'll change i guess one that time is right procrastinating my deranged to change would be a fight so i'm pacifist like i'm afraid to get a bloody fist look at this my mind is pissed and i keep running why is this when i hit it always losing stunning always gentle giant no defines all building alliance and still thinks that i am present i suck at the future but i'm never looking at the fucking present keep it up act like you're all that Here's a cookie stew and a present Led from a desert equals eagles going louder than my mother
fucking beagle and your life, you get no sequel. Sweet you love one crime like an eagle. You are not my equal, you are evil, but I'm feeble, and now I'm going regal. Don't f with us. You are no life. Next time, you say. Just gonna love you and leave you, and I'll see you real soon. Bye! Good vibes in! And the bad vibes out! You feel me? You dig? Cheers, ballers! How it feels, how it feels, feels so real. How it, how it feels, how it feels, how it feels, and that feels so real. How it, how it feels, how it feels, feels, how it feels, feels so real. How it, how it feels, how it. How it feels, how it feels, and that feels so real. How it, how it feels.